All right then, econ friends, welcome back. We've got two of our pieces of the model done. Let's get our third one now, and that is long run aggregate supply, LRAS. What is LRAS? Well, the LRAS curve, like all of our other curves, it's about the relationship. In this case, it shows the relationship between the price level and the quantity of output, AKA real GDP. So the long run AS curve shows the relationship between the economy's price level and its real GDP. But the key is in the long run, which we define in economics as the period of time sufficient for decision makers to adjust to price changes. Remember, in the short run, we had sticky wages, we had sticky prices. We couldn't adjust in the short run because by definition, the time's not long enough. In the long run, by definition, decision makers, households and firms have sufficient time to adjust to changes in wages or changes in other prices. So we would say that in the long run, basically here, we're gonna have time for full adjustment to price changes. In the long run, in other words, once households and firms have had sufficient time to adjust to the price level changes, wages, and profit rates will return to normal. In other words, if there is this uh, boom in prices that was giving firms short run profits, well, they're not gonna last in the long run. In the long run, there'll be adjustments, including workers saying to bosses, hey, there's inflation, we need raises. The bosses will have to pay their workers more money and things will revert back to normal. That's the long run adjustment. And basically in the long run, after we have this adjustment, wages and profit rates will return to normal. So firms will no longer have any incentive to produce anything extra. There's another way to see it. Here's the other way to see it. In the long run, the country's real GDP, which is its output level, is determined only by its productive capacity. Okay, let's say that again, because it's really important. In the long run, changes in the price level do not loosen the constraints that a country has. Go with it again. In the long run, the country's real GDP has only one metric that defines it, and that is the country's productive capacity. Note that this is based on the exact things that we discussed when we looked at economic growth. The productive capacity is tied to a country's supply of resources, its level of technology and innovation, the quality of its institutions, you get the idea. In other words, in the long run, the economic growth, the productivity factors are the only determinant of real GDP. Change in the price level will have no impact on those constraints because in the long run, price level changes are irrelevant because in the long run, we adjust to them. Basically what this leads to, and this is your big takeaway, whereas the SRAS curve was upward sloping, the LRAS curve is perfectly vertical. And you can see it right here. We have, again, price level here, real GDP here. Critically, we have our LRAS here, and it is completely vertical, which is another way of saying that the impact of price changes has no bearing on real GDP. In fact, like we said a moment ago, the only thing that can affect real GDP is the economy's productive capacity. As a result, number one, the LRAS 
is perfectly vertical. And critically, it's located right here at the economy's natural rate of output. When we discussed economic growth, we learned that the natural rate of output, which is related to the natural rate of unemployment, which is related to the economy's productive capacity, right? It's potential output, all those different terms that we learned in the past, we're gonna kind of bring them together and kind of synthesize and make sense of them, okay? So the economy's natural rate of output, which is the maximum sustainable amount of employment that an economy, I'm sorry, which is the maximum sustainable amount of output that an economy can make at its full employment rate, AKA its natural rate of unemployment, that, that natural rate of output that also corresponds to the location of that vertical LRAS curve, okay? Let's summarize that. The LRAS location is determined by the country's natural rate of output, AKA its full employment rate of output, which we defined before as the maximum sustainable output level when the economy is at full employment, okay? So now all these concepts from economic growth and from unemployment, the idea of the natural rate, the full employment rate, the productive capacity, the potential output, they all come together and they determine the location of this perfectly vertical LRAS curve. Now it's important to know that over time, the LRAS can shift like the other curves. And in fact, shifting the LRAS curve is one of the big goals of any advanced economy. Because if you can increase your LRAS, you can effectively get more stuff, more output without inflation, which we'll show later, okay? But here's the key, when it comes to the shifting, it's a pretty easy thing to understand. Since the LRAS is related to the economy's potential output level, the very same factors that explain long run economic growth and explain long run productivity, those very same factors are the factors that will shift LRAS. What are those factors? Well, we've gone over them before. We've gone over them a bit with the PPF curve, the production possibilities model. We also went over these things in our discussion on economic growth. But to recap, the main contributors of economic growth and productivity for any economy would be things like increases in innovation. increases in new technology development, investments in physical capital, more factories, more robots, more machines, more tech, investments and improvements in human capital, a smarter population, well-trained, good management at businesses, good governance, and critically, improvements in the institutions that build the trust that make economic growth possible. So those are the things that are gonna shift LRAS. And you can see it here. As always, we have price level and real GDP. That's what we're comparing. Those are our two variables. We're gonna see here LRAS, the original. This is gonna be in my blue line here. Note again that the LRAS will be located right here, the point that corresponds to the economy's initial natural rate of output, its potential output, its full employment output, its natural rate. Those terms are used interchangeably because they mean the same thing, but from different angles. Well, what's gonna happen is if we get more innovation, better technology, better institutions, improvements in physical or human capital, we're gonna get a shift in LRAS, 
And that's going to take us to a new long run ag supply that will be here. And this value here, what he calls YN2, this will reflect our new sustainable output level given these improvements in our resources or in our capital or in our institutions or in our technologies, okay? So that's the way that it works out. And with that, my friends, we're done with our three pieces. We've covered AD, SRAS, and LRAS. Your big takeaway should be the shape of each one, why they're shaped that way, what can shift them, what determines them. Chew on those pieces for a bit. Make sure you understand the key components of those three parts. Again, AD, SRAS, and LRAS. And in our next video, we'll put it all together by determining equilibrium in this model. Thanks, and I'll see you in a bit.